हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ अवर टॉपिक फॉर एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री द सेकेंड टॉपिक फॉर एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री इज एक्शन ऑफ अल्कलीज ऑन सर्टन मेटल्स सो दिस इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एक्शन ऑफ अल्कलीज ऑन सर्टन मेटल्स और वी कैन से एम्फोटरिक मेटल्स राइट सो हियर द वर्ड वी कैन यूज एम्फोटरिक इन नेचर so if amphoteric metals they react with alkalis what will we observe or what would be the reaction okay so here amphoteric metals when we are talking about so we have in our syllabus three amphoteric metals there are more also tin is also an amphoteric in nature so amphoteric metals in our syllabus are zinc aluminum and lead so when you are talking about zinc aluminum and lead here zinc oxide aluminum oxide and lead oxide okay and zinc hydroxide aluminum hydroxide and lead hydroxide so if you look at this all of them are amphoteric in nature so when all these react with you know alkalis then what we will observe or what are the products form that we will study okay so there will be nine reactions which we have to understand and those are very important okay so this we are going to study and for remembering uh, amphoteric metals remember zal zal is zinc aluminum lead so remember zal okay now let us understand how these these metals will react so first we are taking zinc okay so when zinc reacts with you know alkali we let us say here sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide both can be taken okay and here we will get a so complex soluble salt that is sodium zincate and hydrogen gas will liberate so we can say a colorless odorless gas liberates which will extinguish a burning splinter with a pop sound okay so and now balance the reaction so what is this this is we will say sodium zincate na2 zno2 is sodium zincate right now next is we'll say pb when lead reacts with naoh okay we get here Uh, sodium plumbate na2 pbo2 plus hydrogen so we are calling this as sodium plumbate right and then we have to balance the reaction okay so we have to every time always we write balance reaction okay and here this is na2 pbo2 is sodium plumbate again same observation will be there of hydrogen and third one we write aluminum and reacts with naoh we need to add water also to aluminum when this reaction takes place we are adding water why because this uh, here we are talking about caustic alkali and we are saying it's boiling caustic alkali so we are taking this okay and hot and concentrated alkali we are using hot and concentrated all these reactions are with hot and concentrated alkali right so to have a smooth reaction small amount of water is added and we are getting sodium aluminate plus hydrogen and now the balancing of this reaction is very easy 2 2 2 2 and 3 you put you will able to balance okay and uh, here if the reaction is with uh, koh then also instead of just sodium you have to put k okay so you will get over here Uh, sodium so instead of sodium you are getting potassium aluminate plus hydrogen the balancing remains the same because the valency is same and this uh, all of them are uh, with hot and concentrated alkalis right so uh, these are the three reactions with metal so amphoteric metal reacting with alkali now we will see another three reactions okay with metal oxides we will see now see the salt formed will be the same every time here we are taking zinc oxide zinc oxide when reacts with naoh we get sodium zincate na2 zno2 plus water 
sodium zincate we are getting right so here only difference is there it was a metal okay and here we have oxide so when you are taking oxide here we are getting water now if we are talking about pbo to pbo so when pbo reacts with naoh or koh we will get sodium plumbate these are all complex soluble salts now see as we are talking about this is these are amphoteric in nature so these are base so they will behave as an acid and we are getting salt plus water so another reaction now aluminum oxide when reacts with sodium hydroxide we will see that we will get a sodium aluminate na alo2 sodium aluminate we are getting along with water so here you will have this right now when you are uh, okay so here aluminum is 2 so let us put 2 over here so sodium is 2 aluminum is 2 now oxygen are 4 plus 1 5 here 3 plus 2 5 so it is balanced right so this is sodium uh, aluminate so these are the three reaction now the other three reactions let us uh, uh, write the next one is zinc hydroxide when zinc hydroxide reacts with let us take koh instead of naoh you can take any i mean this alkali koh or naoh any alkali you can take you will get potassium zincate plus water right so we can take this way also potassium zincate plus water we are getting you can take potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide and here two we have to put to balance and here two why because here hydrogen are four okay so now next is with lead hydroxide so when lead hydroxide reacts with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide we get here sodium plumbate if you are taking potassium then we get potassium plumbate and put two over here to here to balance it and the third reaction is with aluminum hydroxide okay so when aluminum hydroxide reacts with naoh we get sodium aluminate and water right now again here aluminum is one sodium is one so hydrogen only we have to see so there are here 3 plus 1 4 hydrogen so put two over here four hydrogen and uh, oxygen when we are talking about so here four oxygen so here 3 plus 1 4 so this is balance reaction so in this manner all these there are nine reactions and these nine reaction are all with amphoteric metals and with alkalis right so this is this was very important now along with this one more very important thing which we did uh, yesterday was how to detect ammonium uh, cation okay so in the previous video all the detection of cations we did and now only with the uh, ammonium compounds are there then what will how will we we test that we have to see how will we confirm that the compound okay is ammonia it contains ammonium ion or it is a compound of ammonia okay so here if we are talking about ammonium ion okay so we have to confirm that the substance uh, contains ammonium ion so how will we confirm confirm so if we want to test for this ammonium ion then what we have to do is you have to use nesler's reagent okay so nesler's reagent turns brown that is the test of ammonium compound so what we have to do suppose any ammonium compound we are testing say the compound is ammonium sulfate ammonium carbonate ammonium chloride so what you have to do is add nesler's reagent okay nesler's reagent so what is this nesler's reagent nesler's reagent is potassium mercuric iodide k2hg i4 this is nesler's reagent okay so when you add it to this it will turn brown or you can say brick red type of color brick red so this is what is the test of ammonium compounds right so nesler's reagent turns brown nesler's reagent is colorless and this will turn brown 
so this is uh, this is how we will detect ammonium cation i was talking about cation so now our topic cation is completed okay detection of cation now we will be studying detection of anions all of you so how to detect anions there are actually six anions in our syllabus okay so here our topic is detection of anions now in this detection of anions there are six anions which are there in our syllabus so those are if i'm talking about here anions so here let us take first let us take first one carbonate okay carbonate then we take sulfite and we are taking sulfate right and the other three we will be taking later on but right now i am writing over here fourth one is chloride fifth is nitrate and sixth one is sulfide okay so these are the anions which we are going to study so let us first understand if this anion see like in the previous video i have explained detection of cation now suppose the salt given to you is copper carbonate i am giving you the salt but you are not aware that you have got copper carbonate salt okay this is unknown for you i have given you in one packet copper carbonate now first thing whenever we start doing any uh, detection okay i explained you yesterday qualitative analysis when we do then first thing we do is physical test so when you will do the physical test of copper carbonate you will see it is greenish blue in color number 1 number 2 so here what identification physical test will it is first physical test we do and in this physical test you will come to know that it is greenish blue in color so you will see maybe if something blue then maybe copper compound and greenish maybe chromium also sometimes so here copper uh, compound maybe you will just try to you know find out that ki which substance it might be on the basis of color it is amorphous okay so all this test we will be doing it after this you may do also action of heat okay so heat the substance okay second step always it is after doing physical test is heat it. so when you are heating the substance and you get that black color substance copper oxide okay which is black cupric oxide and you are getting carbon dioxide it liberates then you can confirm that we are having copper and carbon dioxide that means mostly it is copper carbonate but now after doing all these things exactly if we want to do detection of cations then what you will do you will uh, you will add water and you will make the solution of this right so when you do this divide the solution into two parts okay so if the substance is soluble then it will dissolve if it is not then you have to do action of heat or other way so here if you are supposed getting copper sulfate or any substance so here when you are taking any substance you are dividing into two parts right and then in one part you are adding little of naoh and then excess of naoh and you will observe so if it is cupric then you will get pale blue precipitate and, and it is insoluble with uh, you can say naoh now if it is ammonium hydroxide in solution you are using as a reagent you are using that alkali then in little you will get pale blue precipitate and in excess you will get inky blue solution so that way you will able to confirm the cation but now if we want to detect anion so what we will do is when you are getting so let us Im, uh, you imagine that you have here these are the anions which you are detecting and uh, the salt which you have got okay so salt solution which you have got over here or the salt you are taking here and the salt which you have taken is say sodium carbonate or which you have got is sodium carbonate here sodium sulfite and here you have got is sodium sulfate now suppose all these any salt is given to you here sodium chloride sodium nitrate okay here sodium sulfide or 
anything ZNS, PBS, FES. Okay, so any of these salt you have got. So first step what we have to do is add barium chloride solution. When you have got salt, so what you have to do is add barium chloride solution to the salt solution. So here this is a salt solution let us write over here. To the salt solution you are adding barium chloride. So what you will do? You are adding barium chloride. Add barium chloride solution. Now when you add barium chloride solution and if you are getting white precipitate here white PPT you will get so white precipitate of you are getting barium carbonate or here if it is this substance then also you are getting white precipitate okay of barium sulfide if you are uh, if you are getting white precipitate maybe this substance also so when we are adding you know barium chloride solution we get white precipitate that means out of these three anions any one is present okay we are still not sure whether it is carbonate sulfite or sulfate but out of these three any one is present when you are adding barium chloride to this salt solution and if you are getting white precipitate that means maybe carbonate sulfite or sulfate but if you are not getting barium, means white precipitate on adding barium chloride solution, then for sure these three are not there, right? And here we have actually, these are in two parts. These first three can be detected by dilute sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid and last three, these three are, can be detected by concentrated sulfuric acid. So here detection of anions, this is by dilute sulfuric acid first thing. Now after getting this white precipitate add we will say add here dilute sulfuric acid. We are adding dilute sulfuric acid. Right. So when you are adding dilute sulfuric acid to barium carbonate this this this. So what happens over here is see here barium carbonate reacts with acid. So what happens you know that any carbonate when reacts with acid you get salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So that will happen barium carbonate plus sulfuric acid. So here let me write the reaction barium carbonate when reacts with sulfuric acid we get barium sulfate, water and carbon dioxide. So here you are getting carbon dioxide gas. So the gas will liberate with a brisk effervescence. So when a gas, a gas liberates with brisk effervescence, brisk effervescence and has no effect and has no effect on pink KMnO4, okay? or orange potassium dichromate orange K2Cr2O7 then it is confirmed that the gas which is which is liberated is you know carbon dioxide gas and if carbon dioxide gas is liberated that means the salt has carbonate in it so that is how we will confirm it now suppose if we are not getting this and if we are getting uh, sulfur dioxide gas so if a gas is liberating with the smell of burnt sulfur. Now same way the reaction will be over here. Barium sulfide when reacts with sulfuric acid. So if the reaction, if you are adding here, you are getting this. And if you are not getting this and then on adding sulfuric acid to this white PPT. If you are getting sulfur dioxide gas, this reaction will take place here. Salt plus water plus sulfur dioxide. So if sulfur dioxide gas is there then you will get the smell of burnt sulfur okay so here you will say a gas liberates with the smell of burnt sulfur with the smell of burnt sulfur right okay and it turns pink KMnO4 colorless so we will say pink KMnO4 
turns colorless then it is confirmed that it is you know sulfur dioxide gas or you will say orange potassium dichromate turns you know green so now after getting this result though it is sure that the gas is sulfur dioxide and the substance has sulfite in it whenever any sulfite is there then only it will liberate sulfur dioxide gas right so that is how you will identify and suppose if you are not getting these two and what's happening when you are adding here sulfuric acid to barium sulfate then it will be no reaction what happens ppt does not dissolve here this ppt will dissolve and this gas is liberated here also ppt dissolves and this gas is liberated here it will be no reaction okay and if you are adding hydrochloric acid then also it will you know barium chloride so it is also uh, ppt only so here ppt does not dissolve ppt does not dissolve and if ppt does not dissolve and it remains uh, as it is then that means it is sulfate so then you are getting here the confirmatory test of sulfate right so uh, these are the ways uh, three anions how we detected so uh, with the help of barium chloride and dilute uh, you know sulfuric acid this is very important so dilute sulfuric acid we have added right so by this you we have done the, okay so once again if i repeat this then i will be rubbing this and we will be doing the other three so uh, look at this uh, these are the anions carbonate sulfite and sulfate so when you are taking and these all these are the salt solution you are not aware which salt solution you have got first step is you will add barium chloride solution on adding barium chloride solution if you are getting white ppt that means any of these anions is present and if you are not getting white ppt means out of these three any anions after you get white ppt you add uh, this dilute sulfuric acid so when we add dilute sulfuric acid then if the gas liberating uh, gas is liberating with a brisk effervescence okay so it with bubbles so you uh, maybe it is carbon dioxide and then you do the confirmatory test that no effect on pink mno4 paper or orange potassium dichromate but if the gas liberating which has a smell of burnt sulfur and it is turning pink mno4 colorless or orange potassium dichromate green then the gas is sulfur dioxide and the salt is sulfite here if the ppt does not dissolve on adding sulfuric acid then the substance is you know sulfate right so this is how we uh, can detect these three anions now let us um, understand how we will detect the other three and this we have detected by dilute acid here we will be using concentrated sulfuric acid so the other three anions are chloride nitrate and sulfide so let us write here fourth one was chloride okay and if nacl is taken then nitrate then nano3 and then sulfide s2 minus so if you take fes zns you can take sodium sulfide also any salt solution okay so all these are the salt solution now if we want to if we are not getting white precipitate on adding barium chloride so we have to throw everything again take new test tube and take this salt solution now these three what we have to do is we have to add concentrated sulfuric acid so with concentrated sulfuric acid we can detect right so what will be the reaction taking place here nacl when you are adding concentrated sulfuric acid and you are heating it we will get here you know hcl hydrogen chloride gas and hydrogen chloride gas fumes in moist air so when a gas is liberating which fumes in a moist air so you will say here a gas liberates with which fumes in moist air 
and when a rod dipped in okay and when a rod dipped in a rod dipped in ammonium hydroxide solution is brought near it okay is brought near it it produces dense white fumes produces dense white fumes of ammonium chloride dense white fumes of ammonium chloride so by this it is confirmed the gas is hcl and if the gas is hcl then for sure the salt has chloride in it as an anion right so this is how we can confirm it now the second one is okay here if you are uh, if you are not getting this and if you are getting that uh, reddish brown fumes okay so here when nitrate if the salt is nano3 and when you are adding concentrated sulfuric acid to it we will get here hno3 vapors okay so when you are getting hno3 vapors what you have to do is add copper turning to it so when you add copper turning to this uh, hno3 vapors we will see that reddish brown fumes of uh, you know nitrogen dioxide is liberating and the solution turns blue okay otherwise also if you are not doing this and just heating this hno3 when you are getting and heating it strongly you will see little bit light color but some fumes or reddish brown fumes but here when you are adding copper copper turnings after once you have added concentrated sulfuric acid and if you see some vapors are coming like brown vapors so if you want to still confirm what you have to do is add copper turnings and to and what are you doing this you have got and you are adding copper turnings so you will get that blue color copper nitrate and reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide and by this we can confirm that it is nitrate so nitrate is the anion present in the salt okay so let us uh, we balance this here two here two and this two four right so this is what happened copper turnings you are adding okay now here after that what is the test of uh, nitrogen dioxide the test of nitrogen dioxide is potassium iodide paper turns brown so if you want to confirm then you can confirm this but by the color also we can confirm that nitrogen dioxide gas is released so potassium iodide paper turns brown okay now here one more thing it is possible what we can do is that is you can take agno3 for this we can take agno3 so this is your one test okay but here in okay let us that we will distinguish later on so that part i will explain after we complete this so on adding concentrated here sulfuric acid to this substance then what happens if you have taken ferrous sulfide or you have taken na2s then when you add the sulfuric acid you will get here salt plus h2s and if we get the smell of rotten egg so this gas liberates with the smell of rotten egg okay then it is confirmed that the salt has sulfide and then you do confirmatory test lead acetate paper turns silvery black lead acetate paper turns silvery black so this is how we can confirm that the salt has these anions right now once again i am repeating see the first three we detected by adding barium chloride and then uh, followed by dilute sulfuric acid so if we are not getting any of this then what you have to do is take a fresh test tube take a salt solution add concentrated sulfuric acid 
when you add concentrated sulfuric acid and if you get the gas which is uh, which fumes in moist air then what you have to do is bring a rod dipped in ammonium hydroxide solution we will see dense white fumes of ammonium chloride then it is confirmed that HCl gas is liberating and if HCl gas is liberating that means the salt has chloride in it so, so otherwise if you are not getting this then what we are uh, then if we are getting HNO3 vapors some light brown vapors you will see some some fumes coming out so what you do is uh, to con confirm it that those are brown fumes only then add copper turnings and heat it strongly so when you add copper turnings to this what we have got that is nitric acid and then you will get dense white fume sorry dense reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide then it is confirmed if nitrogen dioxide releases that means the salt has nitrate in it so and the confirmatory test of nitrogen dioxide gas is potassium iodide paper turns brown and the last one is on adding concentrated sulfuric acid to this salt solution if we get the gas uh, with a rotten egg smell and turns lead acetate paper silvery black that means the salt has sulfide in it now let us understand the distinguish how to distinguish between if two salts are given to you then we have to understand uh, how to distinguish between the two salts right so let us take one example suppose here the question is uh, here how will you distinguish NaCl and NaNO3 two salts are given by a chemical test uh, okay so when you are uh, when uh, we have to distinguish these two we can distinguish by adding concentrated sulfuric acid that is what I explained you just now but there is one more way to distinguish this so here what you can do is add silver nitrate solution to both of them add silver nitrate solution to both the substance right so what will happen then both the substance so first point you will write this then you will say the substance okay the substance which forms which forms curdy white precipitate which forms a curdy white precipitate is sodium chloride okay so here uh, and the substance which does not react does not react with okay silver nitrate solution okay is sodium nitrate see let me write the reaction you will understand NaCl when reacts with AgNO3 we will get AgCl that is a curdy white PPT okay plus NaNO3 and if you are taking NaNO3 and adding AgNO3 so the one which will not react okay no reaction okay is nitrate so this is how you know we can distinguish this chloride and nitrate now one more question let us uh, solve okay sodium sulfate and sorry sodium sulfite and sodium carbonate if these two substances are given to distinguish okay sodium carbonate and sodium sulfide how will you distinguish these two substances right so to distinguish this what you will say add dilute acid now you can add dilute hydrochloric acid dilute sulfuric nitric any so add dilute hydrochloric acid to both of them or you just now we had done with dilute sulfuric acid so add dilute hydrochloric acid now in this case if all three if you are not doing practical okay then you can directly add acid to this when this two combination is there when this combination is there so add dilute acid hydrochloric acid to to both the to both the salt solution right 
then what happens the salt the salt solution okay which liberates the gas with brisk effervescence with brisk effervescences okay effervescences okay and has no effect on pink mno4 okay or orange potassium dichromate is sodium carbonate okay sodium carbonate solution or uh, so this is how we will identify now then second paragraph you write that the salt the salt solution which liberates the gas with a smell of burnt sulfur with a smell of burnt sulfur right and and turns pink mno4 colorless and orange potassium dichromate green is sodium sulfide so in this manner we can distinguish both of them this is how you have to write whole distinguish the following pair by a chemical test this is of two marks one question is of two marks this is how you will be distinguishing and you have to always add the same substance and uh, show the same test like here you are taking pink mno4 here also pink if here you are taking potassium bomb potassium dichromate here also potassium dichromate that is how you have to do it right so now suppose if the combination is sulfite sodium sulfite and sodium sulfate then let us understand what you what you will be taking so let me take over here sodium sulfate okay so here if sodium sulfate and sodium sulfite is there right so directly when you will add here see add dilute hydrochloric acid to both so when you are doing dilute hydrochloric acid to both then what will happen here gas will liberate but here there won't be any reaction so instead of doing this first you have to you write down that add barium chloride solution to both okay so whenever there is sulfate okay in combination always and always we have to add barium chloride so add barium chloride solution to both both the both of them or both the salt solution you can say right so then for sulfide over here it is written the salt solution will liberate the gas with the but here you will see that uh, sodium sulfate so you will see that a white precipitate a white precipitate is formed okay the salt which forms you can say the salt okay the salt which forms the salt which forms white precipitate white ppt and then remains insoluble on adding remains insoluble on adding dilute acid okay dilute hydrochloric acid you can say or dilute sulfuric acid you can say okay so is sodium sulfate right now here you will say the salt solution so here we have to add first the salt solution the salt which forms 
the salt solution which forms white PPT. Okay, and then on adding, you know, dilute sulfuric acid liberates the gas with a smell of burnt sulfur and turns pink MnO4 paper colorless. So this is how you will be writing. Here PPT remains insoluble. You have to say PPT remains insoluble. That is the main point over here. Okay. And here you will say PPT dissolves forming, uh, liberating a gas which has a smell of burnt sulfur and pink MnO4 turns colorless and potassium dichromate turns green. So, we have studied all this uh, detection of these cations and these are the six cations, uh, sorry, detection of anions, sorry, sorry. So, we are doing this uh, detection of six anions we have studied, right? So, detection of anions.